All right, what's up, guys? We are live now. Uh, should be. Okay, here we go. Okay, so uh, Calvin, did you have a specific question in mind? Uh, wait, let me get something real quick. Cool. Um, I was wondering what dissociation was. I, was. I didn't write that down perfectly. So. Okay, sure. All right. So when let me get this screen share going. Hold on. Okay. So when we are talking about dissociation, what what does dissociation have to deal with? What are we like? What are we looking at? Um, like splitting of the mind. Okay, very good. So we're talking about hypnosis. Uh, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So when we are, I am trying to get to the right document on here so I can give you a little look. Okay. So can you see on my? Can you see what I'm looking at on my screen? Yes. The uh. I'm going down the notes. Okay, where are we? Hypnosis. I didn't even know. No, this is not working. Okay, so simply put, when you are, can you see, can you see this dissociation right here? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so basically, what is happening is you have a person that is hypnotized, the person that is like uh, over here, the induction of a state of consciousness in which a person apparently loses power of voluntary action. And so the reason why this is happening is because, um, and if you remember from the video, um, Kara, he brought her up and he was like, okay, Kara, and he put her, he put her hands together. Um, and, okay, so he like, so he puts her hands together, and then um, – here we go. Uh, so he, he puts her hands together, and he's just like, okay, so you're not in like this meditative state. You're not like not in control. Like you know what's going on, but you're you, – you can't – you genuinely can't move your hands away from each other. And so what's happening is on one side of her mind, she's – fully functional. She's fully there and she knows she's like, okay, this is weird. This is crazy. I don't know why this is happening. I know that I should be able to just pop my hands apart. And so that's one part of her mind. And then on the other side, she has the part of her mind that is saying, no, you cannot move these hands apart. Like something, there's a force that is pushing these two things together. And so that's the dissociation is that that is created when someone is under a hypnosis. You have part of your mind that is doing one thing and then you have the other part of your mind that's doing another thing and so you'll have people who um, if you watched farther in the video and I'll, I haven't posted it to Schoology but you have people who are like sitting down in their chairs and they're just like I don't know why I can't get up and they're trying to get up and it's just not happening um, how's that sound for you Calvin oh, yeah, that, uh, okay I, I understand now yeah. okay sweet uh, did you have anything else are you good um, wait I think I have one more question Sure. Um, I forgot what sleep spindles mean. Okay. So you don't need to know too specifically um, what exactly they are like comprised of. The major thing that you need to know is that they are like a sign that a person is in stage two of sleep. So what you'll find, and if you look uh, in the uh, – yeah, you can see in the notes section. Um, I've got like a definition for them 
where there are, are brief bursts of fast activity that appear something like the shape uh, of an eye as they rapidly increase in amplitude and then rapidly decay. So basically all that's happening is your brain just has these bursts of uh, theta activity and it's just like one of those things. Oh, we just see a little burst of activity. All right, they must be in stage two of sleep. Um, as the brain, you know, continues to wind its way down um, until eventually it gets to stage three or stage four, and we hit delta waves. So that's what we're looking at here. And so you'll see both of these things: the K complexes and the sleep spindles. So. Uh, okay. Yep. 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 Um, one more thing. Uh, on a quiz, sure. do you really need to know like a lot about the waves, like delta waves, beta? Um, I would know what, um, I would know what stage they correlate to. Um, I would know, um, I, and that's really all you need to know. I mean, you need to know kind of, not, not what they look like. I'm never going to put a picture up, but you need to know that beta waves are found both in, in two very specific places. Beta waves are found where? Um, beta, beta. Wouldn't they be in like, when you're awake? Very good. So when you're awake and alert, but also we see them where? Uh, when you're trying to go to sleep. Mm, nope, we're not going to see – well, technically we will see them when you're asleep, but specifically what stage will we see them in? Um, NREM1. Uh, not not, not non-REM1. Uh, most likely you'll see alpha and theta waves there, but remember we're going to see beta waves when we're in REM sleep. Oh. So – yeah, so when we drop down to this REM sleep, oh, do I not have it in here? It's uh, it's on your sheet of paper. But during REM sleep, what you're going to find is there's going to be like what, what's what's happening with the brain? What are you doing when you're when you're in REM sleep? Um, dreaming. You're dreaming, right? And so what's happening is your brain is moving all the way down to, from you know stage three, stage four to these delta waves where it's really slow. It's not doing a lot of activity, and then suddenly it's spiking up. And you're having all of this activity as your brain dreams, and that kind of ties into um, uh, the the dream theory, where we are, um, uh, where our brain is doing a bunch of stuff. The activation synthesis theory during the night, our brain stems releasing random neural activity, and so our brains lighten up like a Christmas tree. So, so does that does that make sense? So, so like so for beta waves, you'll see them in, in both of those stages. Uh, theta and alpha waves, you'll see those mostly in stage one. Stage two, you'll mostly see theta waves, and then stage three and stage four, it's mostly what kind of waves? Would it be delta? Yeah, it would be delta. Perfect. Yep, yep, yep. I think I understand now. Okay, awesome. Um, uh, are you good to go, or do you need anything else? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Okay, awesome, man. Um, if you have any questions, you can just send me. Uh, if you are, I don't know, if you remember you have another question, you can just shoot me an email and I'll uh, invite you back. Okay, thank you. Uh, see you tomorrow. Okay, no problem, Calvin. Later, bud. Bye, All right, we're, ooh, it's a little too close. Okay, so. Got my witch witch cup. Stuff's good. Okay, so we don't have anyone that is in need at the moment. Oh, hello. Hello. Sorry, I'm trying to run between two or three screens. Okay, so I think what uh, we are going to do. Um, is I am just going to start running through some of the content uh, and just doing lecture stuff because, you know, why not? <laughs> Thought I had this ready. Uh, Dasal, what I'm going to have you do, can you... Okay, so a uh, question to Saul asked is introspection a part of structuralism? 
Yeah, introspection is structuralism. Like that is the remember that interest or structuralism was started by Wilhelm Wundt and uh, whoa, this is like blowing up on me. Hold on, sorry. Just all give me one second. I realize so. Okay, okay. So when we are looking at structuralism, remember that's a school of approach. Is the one of the first schools of approaches, and it's or the first. And when we're talking about interest basically what's happening is it's the vehicle of structuralism. So you have um, a person or a psychologist being like, okay, well, tell me about something that's inside of you. And the person's looking deep inside and then expressing that thing. Um, so yes, like introspection is structuralism. Like it's, it's a major part of it. So yes, but that also will not be on your quiz. So I wouldn't worry about it. Hello, Josh. Yeah. Okay. So, Desal, can you give me like a thumbs up or something? I know you're just in the question or in the boards, but I wanted to make sure that you are Gucci. Okay. So, let's go back to what I was trying to do. All right. Um, I'm really looking forward to talking to myself for the next hour or so. That is sarcasm. Okay. So, thumbs up. Thanks to Saul. Okay. So, nothing from before Harvey. No, Corbin. Nothing from before Harvey. Definitely not. We are, I don't think I'm, like, even allowed to take homework or anything from beforehand. Can I go over the wish fulfillment stuff... Aryan, this is why you're supposed to get on the stream. Do you want me to invite you so you can, you know, be on here? It's the entire point. Ugh. People want to hear you, Aryan. People want to hear you. Okay. Uh, can you go over w wish fulfillment? Yes. Okay. So let us navigate. Okay. So, Freud's wish fulfillment theory. I actually just got finished explaining this to my roommate. He was, he was very fascinated. Okay, so once again, Freud's wish fulfillment, fulfillment theory. Who, you know, if we're talking about Freud, we have two other things that we need to specify. specify. The first is going to be the unconscious mind that is, always needs to be in the back of your head that like anytime we talk about Sigmund Freud, we're talking about the unconscious mind and we are talking about um, the psychoanalytical school of psychology. Okay. So what is happening? That's my music. Okay. Uh, so when, as you can see here, dreams are the key to understanding our inner conflict. So Sigmund Freud, as part of his therapy, used dreams to basically understand the unconscious mind. Because if you remember, when we're talking about the unconscious mind, this is something that we cannot access ourselves. We do not have a way to look in. But Sigmund Freud's like, I can see it, but I need to you know, check out your dreams or something like that. And if you remember, he also used uh, hypnosis as well. But Freud's wish fulfillment theory. So basically, you have all of these unconscious thoughts that are buried, they are hidden, they're underneath the skin, but they want to get out. So dreams are an excellent place to do it. You're by yourself, no one's around, and so Freud was like, "This is where you know, this is where you get a chance to kind of vent and let some steam off." However, we still have two parts to the dream. So if you look at the manifest content versus the latent content, we are still so used to burying these um, these primal urges that we even keep them under wraps in our own dreams. So the manifest content is going to um, be this remembered storyline of the dream. When you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, I had a dream about such and such. Okay. And once again, it's censored, it's symbolic, it is not what is really there. That is the top of the iceberg. And then when you get to the latent content, this is what Sigmund Freud was like, okay, well, let me explain what your dream actually meant. You had, what, falling out teeth. Well, that means that you're under a lot of stress. Uh, you got in a fight with your mom. Maybe you, you know, have some repressed feelings about uh, towards women or something like that. So um, 
in the end, um, as you were going to find here, and we're going to talk way more about this when we get to personality. Most of this is going to be laid to rest as you know, not real, um, but it's fun to think about uh, beforehand. So, um, yeah. So that's the Freud's wish fulfillment theory. So, uh, give me a thumbs up if that was good. Hello, Sana. Corbin, thanks for the thumbs up. Ariane, was that good? We're back. Got my which which cup still. Okay, so if you guys are good, we're going to start running through um, Okay, so if you guys are pretty good so far, I'm just going to start doing some lecture stuff, so here we go. Okay. Um, ba, 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 ba. I just have to check my emails. All right, and you're good. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So, um, okay. So let's go back to the the whole concept of consciousness. Okay. So as we know. As we talked about before, it, we are basically just looking at um, the our awareness of ourselves and who we are as people, just our environment, everything around us. Obviously, there's going to be uh, varying levels of this consciousness. Um, you're going to have times when you're more aware of something or when you are less aware of something. Um, and kind of as we talked about, this isn't like a huge deal, um, but just kind of gives you an idea of where we are as psychologists is this this idea that you know it's fundamental to who we are as people but there's just so much to it that we really just don't understand everything um, and you know our ability to understand the world and process information um, all at the same time is pretty incredible I mean um, we'll talk more about it when we get to sensation and perception but we are bombarded consistently with millions of stimuli from all over the place and it's an incredible that we're able to keep up with you know even half of the stuff um, that is coming through and um, and you know be able to function with you know thousands of different sounds coming around and you know our brain is constantly picking up that kind of stuff and then you know we're focused on this one thing but we've heard this other thing um so it's crazy so it's great um we have an incredible ability of interpreting the world around us um so as we kind of move forward we talked about this um just all of these different varying levels of consciousness and um Simply put, uh, we already know about the unconscious. This is Sigmund Freud. Um, this is um, the the unconscious mind, psychoanalytical school of approach. The unconscious is broken into three parts. You have um, this these primal urges, you know, you know, wanting to do these things that aren't very nice. Very often, they're very sexual or violent in nature. Um, and then you have this aspect that it's something that we can't see, and it's honestly our true selves, which is um, something that people were really excited about and thought was weird and crazy. Um, then you have unconsciousness. Okay, this is just an abnormal state or lack of response to any sensory st stimuli. Most often, as it says, it's you know happening because you get knocked out, uh, you get hit over the head, or you have surgery, something like that. And um, Generally speaking, this is the least amount of um, consciousness that you're going to have in any um, any area, um, and you know, other than you know, dying. Uh, but this is this is where we are at our least aware, our lowest awareness of the world around us. Um, so sleep and dreams. We're gonna cut. Ta I'm gonna tackle that a little bit later as we kind of move through this. Um, but um, drug induced. Once again, drug induced. We will we'll look at that tomorrow when you guys are doing your uh, FRQs. We're gonna you'll see. Don't worry about it for your quiz. Uh, meditation. We talked about meditation already. This is simply the focusing of the mind onto uh, one thing or the clearing of the mind. Generally speaking, it's to help a person ra relax or help them solve a problem or focus on something. And you just need to know that it's an altered state of being. It's not, you know, it's a different state of consciousness altogether. Um, hypnosis, we uh, spent some time on 
And um, goodness gracious, I still haven't posted that video to Schoology. I'm going to do that right now because it's driving me crazy. They keep forgetting to do that. Um, uh, but basically, as um, Darren Brown was like working through um, the different, um, you know, trying to pick, select a person um, to become part of his. Actually, I'm going to do this later because I cannot chew bubblegum and walk at the same time. So I'll post that um, that thing after this. I'm typing up a note for myself right now. So we should be, we should be okay. So, um, so we have four major concepts that we want to look at here. Um, and that is this idea of suggestibility, dissociation, pain control, and psychotherapy. So those are the things that you need to, to really look at. And the reason why I picked, I mean, if you're wondering like, okay, well, there's so much that is involved in hypnosis. Why am I talking about those four things? And so what you're going to find if I can get to it, where's the outline? Here we go. Um, and so this is kind of, kind of, kind of give you an idea of what I look for when I'm putting content together. Um, is this? So once again, this is the outline. This is everything that they want us to cover. And if you take a second and look at this, describe various states of consciousness and their impact to, on behavior. Boom, we did that. Uh, we had that whole PowerPoint, you know, that whole slide specifically for that um, that I just had up two seconds ago, but I'm going to pull it now. Okay, uh, discuss the aspects of sleeping and dreaming, stages, characteristics of the sleep cycle. Boom, done that. Theories of sleeping and dreaming, symptoms and treatments of sleep disorders. Hit all of those things. Okay, describe historic and contemporary uses of hypnosis, pain, pain control psychotherapy. Explain hypnotic phenomena, suggestion and diso suggestibility and dissociation. Boom. All of those things are what we cover um, uh, in the class. So if you're ever wondering, like, where's my, how does Mr. Monk decide on these certain things? And that's, that's the reasoning behind it. So, um, okay. So we are looking at um, this idea of suggestibility. Do, 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 do. Let me get back to that. Okay, so I was uh, just explaining this. Hold on. I was just uh, explaining this to uh, Calvin a minute ago, but we'll go go over it again. Um, suggestibility and dissociation. Um, so, Aaron Brown, when he was starting his um, presentation. He was looking for someone that he could hypnotize into practice um, murdering uh, someone, you know, someone. And so that was the whole thing. Did Sirhan Sirhan, was he actually hypnotized to kill, uh, you know, John or Robert F. Kennedy? And so there's a lot of like, well, this seems kind of silly. So that's what that's what they're testing. And so he is looking for the person that is the most suggestible, the person that is most likely to, or the, the, the quality of, you know, not gullibility, but the quality of following along with what um, the hypnotist wants them to do. He wants them to, um, to accept the suggestions. He wants them to... Um, to follow along with what he says, to ignore probably information that might be like, hey, this is probably not a good idea. I should not, you know, throw acid in someone's face or shoot someone um, or something like that. So, um, so what? So that's what he's looking for. So suggestibility, that quality of being inclined to accept and act on suggestions of others, is a huge for hypnosis. And what you'll find is you find plenty of people who are like, forget that. I'm not, you know. I'm not going to focus in on what you're saying, um, and they're just not suggestible. Mm. My dog Teddy is not excited that I'm not paying attention to him. He is looking to – sorry about that. There you go. Okay. Oop. Okay. Sorry. Let me get back to this. Okay. Um. What was I? Okay, so this, so that's what he's looking for. He's looking for people that are the most suggestible. Okay, and 
So once he gets people into a hypnotized state, that's what dissociation is. Dissociation is like an aspect of hypnosis, and it's telling us what is like happening, happening to them. Um, it's it's like the reason why a person is hypnotized, like an aspect of that hypnotization is that splitting of the mind. So dissociation is saying that, okay, when a person has been hypnotized, basically their, their mind is put into two spots. One of them is focusing in on, you know, what someone is saying and the other part is doing this other thing. Um, and so, you know, you kind of go back to that moment with Carol and, you know, she's, she's completely there but in oh no you guys are looking at all this stuff i'm so sorry i thought i'd put you on to oh no i thought i had you on the right thing goodness gracious i'm still working on uh doing this properly and i don't think i'm doing a very good job all right I can do this. There we go. Okay. Oh my goodness. We've been having that in the wrong spot this entire time. Okay. So, okay. So going back with the dissociation, you know, it's just that it's the splitting of the mind and it's allowing us to, um, you know, ignore pain. It's allowing us to, um, you know, focus in or, you know, have one part of our body being like, okay, well, this should be super cold or this, you know, something like this should be going on. But then the other part's like, no, everything's fine. It, you know, we're not doing this thing. Um, and so it's just that once again, voluntary splitting of the mind, that's association. Um, so pain control. Um, so when we are looking at uh, pain control, once again, we, we know that this is a, a this is a thing. So, and I uh, totally, totally goofed. Uh, today in lecture and I had just blanked on the guy's name and then when I was uh, lecturing you guys I quickly like ran over to the screen and like grabbed a name and it was the wrong name so when we are looking at pain control and we'll talk about this tomorrow in class so I'll make sure that everyone knows when we're looking at pain control the the guy who started that was not uh, Franz Mesmer uh, the gentleman's name is actually Ernest Hilgard Ernest. Okay. Um, so uh, Franz Mesmer also did um, did work with pain control and stuff, but Ernest Hilgard is actually going to be the guy that we are looking for. Um, so we'll talk about that in class tomorrow. It's not a big deal. Um, but Ernest Hilgard is is our man, and and, and for that, so my bad. Um, and so he's going to be the one that's going to really kind of push forward this like, hey, we can use hypnosis to help people uh, deal with pain or deal with, you know, go through surgery or something like that. Um, and so finally, when we're looking at psychotherapy, um, I've got a whole, you know, big laundry list coming in, you know, big uh, definition coming in on this one. But very simply, um, what what Freud originally started to do with psychotherapy was to take that to help people access their unconscious mind and um, and so that was kind of the beginning of it and as people have moved forward they've they found that people who have been who are hypnotized um, you know it, it can help them work through some of their issues especially with things like heavy anxiety uh, people having trouble um, uh, maybe they're afraid of a large group of people, but they have to ride the bus every day in order to get to work. Well, we could use something like hypnosis to put them that they could kind of maybe self-hypnotize or uh, someone could help them with that. And they get into a, um, get into a way. I don't want to interrupt, but is there? Yes, Corbin, the entire idea is for you to interrupt. Uh, otherwise, I'm really just rambling, and I don't want to ramble. So please, please do that. Okay. I don't want to interrupt, but is there any difference between non-REM 3 and non-REM 4 that we need to know? No, you don't need to know any difference between those two uh, for the quiz. Uh, they are literally – one is literally just a deeper version of the other. There is, you know, nothing fancy going on. So one is just deeper than the other. So you're good, Corbin. Thank you for the question. Please, please ask questions. <laughs> 
I don't want to just lecture the entire time. I don't, I mean, I do like hearing the sound of my own voice, but, um, you know, I, I get, it gets lonely in here by myself. I mean, I have my dog, but right now he's playing with a toy and ignoring me. So hello, Teddy. Okay. So good question, Corbin. If you can just give me a thumbs up to make sure I know that you heard that, that would be good. So yeah, no difference between non rem uh, stage three and stage four. They're basically just, yes, it is nice. All right. Okay. So I am trying to, what am I trying to do? Corbin, you broke up my, my mental process here. I was on a roll. Okay. Uh, what do I want to pull up? Okay. So let's go back um, to psychotherapy. So you have people that are um, dealing with anxiety, dealing with maybe small pains or maybe large pains. Are you you are technically not sleeping in non-REM sleep? Yes, that is correct. So technically during um, non-REM sleep one, you are still awake. So if you go uh, and you take a ba -ba 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 -ba. If you take a look at is this, one, this one, okay. Uh, one of my roommates left the refrigerator open. Hold on. Hey, David. Hey, someone needs to close the refrigerator, please. I have ears like a hawk. It's amazing. Thank you, Jacob. Okay. Uh, oh, no. Where was I? Stage one. Okay. Stage one. Yes. Technically not sleeping. Um, this is the transition. This is when you know you're going from that wakefulness to sleep, and uh, you have people who are just like, "Oh, I uh, I woke up, or you, you woken up right before they fall into stage two, and they're still uh, they're still they're still awake." So yes, good question. All right, I apologize, Ariane. Uh, if that answers your question, give me a thumbs up. Okay. Is sleep apnea waking up at night randomly specifically due to breathing problems? Yes. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Just all that's, that's all that's happening is a person with sleep apnea has those moments where they, um, where they wake up simply because, um, they, they stop breathing. Where did we have our sleep disorders? Um, yeah, I, that, that's all that's happening really. So sleep apnea, temporary cessations, temporarily stopping breathing sleep, and repeated momentary awakenings. When you stop breathing during the night, you're, you're going to wake up. Like <laughs> your body is not going to let you, uh, suffocate to death, uh, over, you know, over yourself, not breathing. So you will, you will always like, uh, snore or, uh, pop up and, um, you'll, you know, you're, you, you won't die. So uh just all give me a thumbs up if you got that one so okay cool um okay let's go back to states of consciousness or let's go back to hypnosis okay actually i think i'm done with hypnosis thank you just okay uh so done with hypnosis all right uh consciousness while awake um Nothing fancy here. Um, we're talking about daydreams and fantasies. Uh, we know what daydreams and fantasies are, um, and we do it all the freaking time. Um, most of the time, it's just us, you know, escaping, getting an opportunity to get away from the boring life or the boring lectures or whatever's going on that is not terribly interesting at that time. Um, so that's what it is. And we do it, and it's technically a different state of consciousness because it's not us focusing. You know, it's it's not the, the person who is daydreaming or fantasizing is away from the universe. You know, you can you can see it, and you try to you know snap them out of it. It's like, ah, oh, where have you been? What are you what are you doing? So, um, okay, cool. So that is consciousness while well, awake. Okay, uh, I'm going to spend about two seconds with automatic and control processes. You know this, automatic pro process, processes, you're doing this uh, basically, you know, without paying attention, you're breathing, you're doing things, it's simple. Uh, control processes, you do it while, uh, you know, while you're paying attention to that thing, something that you're focused on. Um, so, uh, what's something else I wanna say about this? Um,
yeah, that's that's about it. I mean, um, I mean, this picture is all kind of talking about like what happens when um, they kind of go out of whack. Um, but I like to think of it as like when you're like texting and driving. Um, basically, you can really only focus on one of those things, and you don't honestly do both of them very well at the same time. So, uh, but we'll save that. That's for um, split attention and stuff. We'll we'll save that for um, a later date. Um, okay, on to sleep and dreams. Okay. Oh, I still have people here. People are still watching this stream. I'm so proud of you guys. And I've got six likes. Hoo -hoo -hoo. I feel like I'm making it on the big time. Mm. Okay. Is this the screen that you guys are seeing? I feel it's way off of what I'm actually on. Let's see if this fixes it. Do I have like two up? Okay. Oh, see, I just lost a viewer. This is the minute I got excited about having people on, it goes away. No, what is wrong with this? All right, hold on, guys. I have got to fix a problem. Okay. Come up on the right screen. There we go. Okay. Did that work? That worked. No. Okay. All right, we're up and we're in. Okay, so um, circadian rhythm. Okay, easy. Biological clock, 24-hour. This is what um, helps kind of uh, dictate our wakefulness. You're going to have uh, the higher the blood temperature, um, the uh, the more awake that you are going to feel. Um, and so, you know, this this right here is a teenager's circadian rhythm. And as we talked about, you know, we shouldn't be in school. This is terrible because we're – uh, you guys are feeling uh, super groggy and tired when we are right in the middle of school. Um, so yeah, do 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 do. That circadian rhythm. You'll definitely need to know about circadian rhythm. Okay, waves. Um, so we have specifically four different types of waves. Um, and most of the and we'll we will see all of these waves at some point while you are sleeping. So first off, you have these beta waves and beta waves, um, obviously awake alert. Um, you'll see them while you are uh, you know alive and well thinking and stuff like that. Um, but you will also see beta waves when you are in REM sleep. So beta waves also pop up when you are. Um, uh, when you are um, dreaming, so uh, which is one of the kind of the thing, the things that is uh, interesting or weird to see is that you'll have a person that's dreaming or excuse me sleeping, and if I can pop over to this um, sleep stages section, you'll see this person going down and almost think of this as like brain waves. The brain waves are slowing, 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 and then suddenly they pop back up. And all of a sudden, we have these very active um, brain waves that are that are shooting off, and so um, these are those beta waves. So I'm sure for the first few people who did this, they didn't really understand what was going on. Like, oh my gosh, why is this person's eyelids moving? Why are they? Uh, why are they suddenly? Um, why is their brain suddenly going crazy? Um, so, um, so that's beta. Uh, alpha waves. Alpha waves we will see primarily um, in stage one, um, but also before stage one, when the person is like really just kind of slowing down um, and getting ready to go to bed. But we'll see we'll see them in stage one. But what you will so the, these are the ones that you'll see the least. These alpha waves. Um, but uh, also in stage one and mostly in stage two, you'll see these. Um, these theta waves and the theta waves are going to be a great way to, for us to see that oh, okay we're we're asleep now like this is this is happening you have things like k complexes and sleep spindles that will happen while you're looking at these theta waves um, and basically those are just bursts of energy um, bursts of um, uh, brain brain messages going across and so you'll see um, k complexes and those um, uh, those 
you know, sleep spindles run across those theta waves and the person will be like, oh, that uh, the person who's sleeping is in stage two. Um, so then uh, once we've kind of moved past the theta waves, we'll drop down to these delta waves. And it's easy to see with these delta waves, they're slow, they're long, they're tall. And it's just showing that the brain is really slowing down. Um, it's really um, just kind of closing off. And, uh, ooh, excuse me. Um, is just getting ready to hunker down for, and you know, just not doing a lot. And so once again, you'll see this. You know, you're awake, you're alive, you're getting, you're getting sleepy, you're actually asleep, and then you're really knocked out, and then it's going to pop back up to these beta waves uh, when you're uh, when you're dreaming, when you're in REM sleep. Um, so sleep stages. Um, again, when we are looking at these. Um, we are seeing that uh, it takes about 90 minutes, uh, give or take, uh, 90 minutes to move through um, all of these stages, um, starting from stage one to REM sleep. And we will move through these, sta these stages multiple times through the night um, as, we, um, as we move through our sleep. So those are the sleep stages. Um, Wondering if um, I guess I should probably talk about the different sleep stages very briefly. Uh, I don't really know how to transition. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, is everyone okay? Does anyone have any questions? I see that I technically have 14. Actually, let me test this. It says that I technically have 13 people watching now. Can just throw me like a thumbs up or say something in the live chat. I want to know if, if I really – I'm okay with talking with myself, but I want to know if I technically am talking to myself. Okay, sweet. I have 13 people lurking in the background. Oh, Peyton's here. Thank you, Peyton. I appreciate you. Dasal's still here. All right, Cassie. Oh, wow. Okay, so you guys are all here? I am. We're about, you guys are about like 14 to 15 seconds behind me. So y'all are fantastic. Okay, yeah. So there's like a 14 to 15 seconds second delay. Um, and that delay. Uh, almost broke me as a human being, but uh, you guys, you guys are awesome. Okay, so I'm going to go back to talking to a small group of students, uh, which makes me feel so much better. Thank you, Corbin. All right, you guys are all fantastic. So, uh, how do you put in a heart? I don't know how you do this. I don't know how you put in an emoji heart, but I'm working on it. Just imagine me putting in an emoji heart. There we go. That's as close as I'm going to get. And now my roommate is looming over me, trying to distract me. But I've – what, Jacob? <laughs> I have students. They're actually here. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> what? They can probably hear you. What do you want? Okay, hold on. I, I might be actually needed. Give me a second. about it later. I have 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I have to get through the rest of this. They can't see you. Okay, sorry. My roommate is thinks he's hilarious. Look, this is their screen. They can't see you. Okay, so let's go back. Where are we? I can't lose my my followers. They they're depending on me. What do we talk about? Okay, sleep stages. Okay, so very quickly, let's run through the three the five sleep stages. You guys already know these. Okay, so first, stage one, we are looking at person's not actually technically asleep. They're in it for a very short period of time, um, and you're running on those hypnic jerks. You have those hypnic jerks that they um, that they show, and it's really funny when they, you know, have that jerk and wake up in the middle of class and you get to laugh at them. Okay, uh, stage two, K complexes, sleep spindles. Once again, this is the onset. This is the beginning of sleep. 
when you are uh, when you hit stage two, you are now technically asleep. Stage three, stage four, these are delta slow wave sleeps. And what you're going to find again is when you go down and you look at a lot of these um, sleep disorders, bam, night terrors, very often happening in non-REM sleep too. Sleepwalking, stage three of um, of sleep. So a lot of these things, uh, a lot of these disorders are fun, funny enough happening in stage three or stage four. So, uh, so uh, okay. So delta wave sleep in stage three and stage four. Make sure that you know that. Um, okay. Let's see. REM sleep. Uh, REM sleep. You guys know this is the paradoxical sleep. REM stands for rapid eye movement sleep. Um, it, it, uh, the brain is, is active, but the body is completely paralyzed. You often have vivid, vivid dreams during that time. Um, the body being paralyzed allows you to, you know, not run around and uh, do, uh, you know, do adventures in your sleep. It keeps you from, you know, running away. So, um, okay, real quick, why do we sleep? Recuperates, helps restore our fading memories, duh. Um, feeds creative thinking, duh. Supports growth, it's pituitary gland, releasing growth hormones. We'll talk more about that next week, um, but this is, you know, this is you growing. Um, insert short jokes here. Um, and then that sleep protects idea. So make sure that you do remember this. This is going to pop, this I'm sure will pop up on a test question or a quiz question uh, because it's kind of one of those, um, one of those ones that uh, is just outside the normal. It's just this idea that once again, sleep doesn't technically really protect us because we're safe, but our ancestors needed a place to survive. Uh, so for those of you who play Minecraft, this is right up your alley. You know exactly what it's like. You gotta, you gotta oh, excuse me. You have to find a safe place to hide. Otherwise you're going to get, you know, eaten by, you know, those things. I don't know what those are. So zombies, creepers. Thank you, roommate. Ske zombies, creepers, skeletons, all of the, all of the above, those things that come out at night. Whoa, people have, wait, hold on. People ask questions. What's up, Josh? You're finally caught up. Okay, so I mainly understand everything, but can we do practice problems after reviewing? Yeah, we can do practice problems. Josh, you're watching 1.5. What stage do alpha waves show up in? Corbin, mostly alpha waves are gonna pop up in stage one, and that's about it. Um, you're not really gonna see them um, show up in any in anything else. Just that stage one of sleep. You're not really going to see them. Uh, you're not going to see them much in stage two. You'll see them maybe a little bit. Uh, no, 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 you won't. Yeah, you won't. Brief periods of alpha waves will only happen in stage one. So alpha waves, only stage one. Uh, can you do past quiz questions with us? Josh, I did that in class. I have to be careful. Okay, because if I give you guys all the quiz questions, I, you know, I might run out of things. Okay, hold on. Let's do some review stuff. How do we review? You guys have to be in the chat if you want to review. Otherwise, it seems silly. Right? Can you do more? Josh, I feel like this is, this is too much. Okay, hold on. You guys want to do... Okay, I can do some more. Uh... Give me a second. I have to pull them up. Uh, oh, no. Oh, okay. I just deleted. I just exited out of the wrong thing. Hold on. I'm doing a great job of this right now. Okay. Uh, so... Can you make a quick summary of the cognitive approach and physiological approach? Okay, cognitive approach, simply put, I'm going to answer these while I'm um, trying to pull up quiz questions. Cognitive approach, you don't have to worry about too much. We'll go into it a little bit later, but um, it won't be on your quiz. Um, this cognitive approach is trying to understand how we think about things, how we process information. Um, and so any sort of like psychological problem is going to uh, stem down to this idea that the brain is not, that you're not thinking things through properly. You're not 
processing information the way that you should. And then physiological approach is just about the brain. So it's talking about like if there's someone with a psychological problem, well, there's something that's been damaged with the brain or there is um, a chemical imbalance. So it's always looking at, you know, what's the damage, what, you know, what's going on specifically with the uh, brain. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Fatima, can you throw me like a thumbs up if you got that, if that makes sense to you? Okay. Um, I don't know how I want to do this. Hmm. Okay. Um. All right, here's a old quiz question. Um, a person suffering uh, from insomnia might experience which of these symptoms? I don't know if that's big enough for you guys, if you can see that. See, now if you are on the live stream, if you're on the live stream, we could do interactions like this. This is this is this is is the point of doing the live stream. So we now have 17 viewers. So uh person suffering from an insomnia, um what are we looking at? Basically just having difficulty falling or staying asleep. Wow, that was easy. Okay. Man, that last quiz must have been super simple for these kids. Hold on. Let me find a different one. Uh, I can't let you look at the rest because I might use one of those questions. I need to ask some of these. I'm going to have to make this quiz harder. This is too easy. Uh, uh, okay. Maybe like two more. And then... And no more, no more quiz questions. Okay. Whoa, who's doing the C? C, oh, you guys were answering. You guys are so apart. Keep it easy. Josh, none of that. At least for this semester. Please don't make it harder. Oh, no. I just need to ask better questions. I don't know. Okay, activation synthesis theory. Number 14, what do we got? Where are dreams coming from? What do you guys think for number 14? Siddharth, good. Emily, good. Yes, C is what we're looking for. Okay, random neural, random activity of nerves in the brain cells. Whoop, whoop. You guys are going to do so well on the quiz tomorrow. So proud of you. Okay, which of the following is most likely to happen to young children who have had something traumatic happen in their lifetimes? Ooh, come on. All right, moving on to 15. Josh sliding in first. A is yes, is correct. We are looking for night terrors. Good, good, good. Peyton, no. Q. Q is not. Okay, Q is technically close to A. I'll let it slide, Peyton, but just this time. Yes, very good, guys. A is what we're looking for, night terrors. Okay, uh, so let's do this. I'm just going to ask a question, and let's see if you cats can get it. Uh, what are we looking at? We're like Beck looking at me. No one wants to do a look at that. Um, okay. So, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. let me. I got five minutes. We gotta get some stuff in.
Okay. Um, so. Uh, okay. So a patient comes into Sigmund Freud's office, and he says that he is having uh, a dream. He's been having this reoccurring dream, and in this dream, um, he is um, shooting a basketball into a hoop, but he keeps missing, and he just keeps shooting and shooting and missing and missing. Okay. Um, Sigmund Freud would say that the story that he just told was what was what part of the dream? Simon, I will go over suggestibility in just one second. Fatima, I think I just did a situation question. I did. Manifest content. So Darth, twice your first. Good man. Maybe you just have a better stream than everyone else. Good. Yes. Manifest content is what we're looking for. Okay, so let me tell you about suggestibility real quick. Okay, um, you um, basically what we are looking at is it's when someone the opposite of latent content. Josh, that's not good enough, but yes, it is correct. Okay, here we go. I got you. Uh, suggestibility. So it's a concept of um, hypnosis. Okay, obviously, and it is the quality of a person. So it's like a character type. It's a person's like personality. And some people are just more open to listening and paying attention and focusing on what the hypnotist wants to them to do. And so that entire video that we were looking at yesterday, um, Darren Brown was trying to find the most uh, suggestible person uh, so that he could see if he would, you know, end up going and, you know, fake shooting somebody. So that's suggestibility. It's just how willing a person is to follow through with what um, uh, uh, with what the hypnotist wants them to do. Uh, throw me throw me a thumbs up if that uh, explains that to you. Um, okay, I want to ask some more questions. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, um, ooh, sorry. Uh, just trying to find something that you guys could I could use as a question. Um, Okay, so what is this uh, concept known as the divided consciousness? So when a person is hypnotized, what's this idea that their consciousness is split? What is that called? The idea of a divided consciousness while a person is, in, uh, is hypnotized. Dissociation. Yes, very good. Dissociation is what I am looking for. Perfect. Okay. Um. <laughs> These are all questions that look better in multi multiple choice um, sorry guys I think next time I will definitely have some better questions for you I'm a little I'm kind of stumbling right now um, uh, human body temperatures typically rise with the oh no uh, uh, a human's body temperature uh, dictating uh, whether or not, um, like, or how wakeful they are. What is what is that? What is that a part of? A person's body temperature dictating how awake they are. Hey, 
a person's body temperature dictating how awake they are. Yes, circadian rhythm is what we are looking for. Okay, last question, and then I am going to bed. This is 9 o'clock. It's getting close to my bedtime. Okay. Um, oh, no. I had, I had my question, and it disappeared. Okay. Um, so uh, what... Um, during sleep, our body uh, does a lot of growing. What part of the body helps with that? What organ helps the body grow while we sleep? What organ helps the body grow mostly while we sleep? Yes, Sana. So basically what it is, uh, pituitary gland, very good. Okay. So basically, Basically, what's happening, Sana, is that um, that's that's how it dictates whether or not you're awake or not. So when we were looking at the um, – very good, guys. Very good. Pituitary gland is correct. Um, when we were looking at that chart of uh, high school students and you know how they were feeling um, or how awake they are, and you were finding that the, they were most awake at night, and that's what we were complaining about. Well, if you also look, that's their temperature. So the, the higher your body temperature, the more alert and the more awake you are. And that's, that's basically what's happening. So that's, that's what it's talking about. So yes, it's the 24-hour clock, but your 24-hour clock is dictated by this temperature uh, inside your body. Okay, so that's it. It is – we are – that's Quayton's. Sana, can you just give me a thumbs up just to make sure I know that you know that you're good? Make sure that's that's okay with you. Okay, guys, that is time. Uh, we are we're done for the day. So, um, Teddy, come here. This is I don't know. Come here. I don't know if you guys got to see this. This is my dog. Come on. This is my dog, Teddy. He's been waiting for me to go do something with him. So I'm going to do that and then probably go to bed. So, all right. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for stopping by, guys. And uh, you all have a good night. And we will see you tomorrow bright and early for your quiz. Way too early for you guys. We should have you know class starting right about now. Okay. You all have a great day. We'll see you later. Bye.